We are now up to chapter seven of the book In the One Spirit, which is about my great grandmother, Harry Burnett Rhodes. This chapter has some of the deepest material of the book. So I'm including fewer illustrations in this video because I think to get the most out of this material, one needs to just listen and absorb her words. She explains the full range of health, our mental abilities, and how psychic phenomena work. Huge concepts told concisely in her own words. What she describes so simply is the underpinnings of today's explorations and ideas that have resurfaced through history on the role of thoughts and attitudes, on our health, to the new physics of the plasma-based electric universe. She explains how faith in that spark of the divine within each of us is essential to transforming hopes into getting what you want in life. She speaks her truth in the way of someone who knows what works because they experience it every day. So listen with an open mind. She explains why this is important before the end of the chapter. What if this were the story of your great grandmother? Chapter seven, how the power works. Physiologists do not fully understand the nature of sleep because it serves a psychic as well as physical function. Rest induced by sleep gives the soul a chance to go to school. So long as we live on earth, we are fastened by a thread to our bodies. This thread is the silver cord and it gives us freedom to travel long journeys through space and return safely to our physical houses. At death, this cord breaks and we go onward in our finer bodies. During earth life, many of us fail to realize that we are in reality spirit and our natural home is on the higher planes, that we have come to earth life and wear our heavy bodies here simply because we need earth's experience to make us strong and able to gain mastery over ourselves. But during sleep, we are permitted to slip into the borderland, which lies between this plane and the discarnate planes. We may then study to improve ourselves, or we may visit those in need of our help. Many persons are able to remember the experiences of the night and recall the places and the people that they saw. When we are able to bring back the memory of what we did during sleep, we may make an effort to remember it. And then it remains clear to us. The reason these memories sometimes become distorted dreams is that we have failed to keep our poise as we re-entered our material body and being neither in nor out, we see the memory picture out of focus. This is as if we see a reflection in a mirror when we are looking at it off from the side. The brain is intended only for use in our present earth life, and it is not wise to try to fill it with too many experiences from dreams. Only those which are of practical use should be remembered. These dream experiences are recorded upon the higher or soul mind, which is eternal and is fitted to keep all these long-lasting eternal records. During our absence from the body, we may meet many wonderful souls who are teachers of men, who give us wisdom and instructions for our work upon the earth. There upon the border between this plane and the higher ones, we meet those we love, and in the morning we say we dreamed of them. And the dream stays long and very clear. Many times some burden or sorrow leaves us during these dreams, and we are comforted. Again, we often solve some problem during sleep even when our waking mind had no solution for it. To be more receptive to these experiences, set an instruction to your mind just before you go to sleep. The ability to instruct the body depends first of all upon imagination. My use of the word imagination means the ability to create upon the mental and psychic planes. It is the positive negative or that you could say the mother father of invention. Whether the invention is a poem or a picture, a building, a city, a community, or a government, the idea is first created in the imagination and then born or precipitated into reality. The imagination is best called into play while you're in silence. With an inner stillness, we receive the seed of an idea. Then the imagination holds this seed expands it, 
compels its growth until it has become a clear positive concept which is ready to manifest in the visible plane of life. Success comes from knowing in your heart that you are working with God. Paul said, one plants and another waters, but God gives the growth. Jesus said, it is the Father in me. He does the work. Obviously, the idea is to use the help that God offers and align this help with the idea of the nature of God. Many ideas never develop into reality because they lack the cooperation of God. But suppose that our idea of health is open enough. It's free from some other image that you might have in your head. Then you can touch this creative force, which is God. Then we use our ability to imagine a mental image of what we will become. This image becomes a template that registers in first our psychic body, and it is then transmitted throughout the physical body. And from this, our bodies build flesh and blood to this template. This mental transmission is not enough on its own. We need to maintain a steady connection with the source of spiritual energy. And if not, the things that we manifest will only be temporary. Science has discovered that the human body is composed of atoms all vibrating continuously. Have you ever stopped to think of the word atom? In the 1940s, the dictionary definition tells us that an atom is the smallest particle of matter, indivisible, without decomposition. But it can mean something far deeper than that. If we parse the word differently, you can see the word at, which means nearness to, or in the same place, or in the direction of. The second part of the word is the Eastern word, om. This signifies the supreme power for God. Together, at om, this suggests nearness to, or in the direction of God. This brings a clear picture of a body composed of countless millions of particles vibrating in the nearness to God. The only reason we have our dis-ease is because of our imperfect thoughts or when our emotions cause this resonant harmony of the vibrations of our body toward God or toward the universal power. The perfect vibrations of atoms is radiant, luminous. If this beneficial luminosity is maintained, you will find no dark corners in yourself. With your body filled with this light, every atom will flow towards God, the universal intelligence, and you will express harmony and love. This light will seem complex because it contains different signals from the varied planes of vibration, and yet it is all one single light because all these signals harmonize with each other. Because of this harmony, you will feel balance and internal equilibrium. This is because your mental reason and logic is in balance with your emotional intuitive desires. When in this harmonic state, there is an easy shift for your brain from being a transmitter to being able to receive information and instructions from higher planes. These messages are absorbed into our imagination, which is the creative power of seeing a thing in its completeness. I want to step in here for just a moment. One of my favorite researchers right now is the eminent psychiatrist, Dr. Ian McGilchrist. And he describes this creative power that she's talking about of seeing things in their wholeness and completeness as one of the primary functions of our nonverbal right brain that right now our society is really giving very little attention to. So back to the book. When the imagination has completed its inner work, you shift back to positive active mental state where you transmit your intention in a way that it can develop in reality. This extra light surrounds you even when you cannot see it. The person doing this feels brighter and more energetic to those around him. This radiates out into the environment. So here is an example of someone who believes they actually understand this teaching and yet nothing seems to improve for them in their health or in their life. This man becomes aware that he is more than merely a physical being. He realizes that he has many realms of action within himself 
He studies and he finds his mental and psychic abilities. He discovers that his power of imagination is not just a playground for fancy, that he can use it for great creative purposes. He learns that when he relaxes and holds still within, he receives inspiration. Now let us imagine that he has tried many affirmations, yet his body is not in good shape, and his wallet is empty, and his whole environment is desolate. His circumstances are not in perfect health. So what's wrong? Somewhere in his process, he has failed to bring these imaginings into reality. This person has to look back at the instruction again until he realizes and really recognizes himself as God's child. A child of God contains a spark of the divine and the ability to create, as does his father. With this comes a sense of harmony and peace, and he knows that his hopes and intentions are those of a child of God. This means that he can call upon his imagination to help him build the picture of abundance into his being, into his aura, and also into every circumstance in his life. But how does he do this? Well, he has to visualize his pantry filled with food or his closet holding stylish clothes, seeing his business thriving and his wallet full. He sees his body in full health. This is still not enough. When his imagination has built this picture until each detail is complete and visible to his inner sight, he must then use his faith. Faith is expectancy. That is, faith is the outcome you expect to happen. To know this with the surface mind is not enough. This man must know it in his depths, to his core. When both the soul and his inner sight of mind agree on a concise vision or created picture of what he wants, he should then shift to the positive transmission power of the mind. One must know this to his depths, to his core. When both the soul and his inner sight of mind agree on a concise vision, or a created picture of what he wants. Then he shifts his positive mental transmission power of the mind. This happens when he can say to himself, I know these things are mine on the invisible plane. Therefore, I know that they will become visible on the manifest plane on earth as we know it. I now command them to generate. I expect it. In Mark 11:24, Jesus said, What things whatsoever you desire, first pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. James 1, 5-7 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Here we see that man's wavering faith cuts the harmonic connections so that the things which could be waiting for him are unable to reach him. This wavering is partially a matter of the will. There never seems to be a time when we can dispense with the use of the will. As one of my teachers admonished me, Oh, child, you must use your will to master the conditions and circumstances of everyday life. Not alone, not by going into a place of isolation, does one gain this power of self-mastery. Do this in daily life with your fellow men. The muscles of your will shall become strong from this exercise. You will learn to choose which vibrations to let affect you and to overcome or drive away all undesirable thoughts or forces. And then when the time comes to concentrate all your thought upon one point, thought will have the ability to close the door against all else and then open yourself and become receptive to the thoughts from above. You can also do this in meditation. Free from all thought, so the forces from the higher planes shall sweep upon your brain, bringing a new line of vibration. Understand that your will is a powerful agent in life. 
that when it becomes trained sufficiently, you will have gained complete mastery over yourself and your surroundings, your circumstances, and your future. Learn to conquer yourself upon all planes, physical, mental, and spiritual. For when you can conquer your own mind, you are a master of all. Then step forth, a master among men, able and efficient, and your work shall be accomplished, and men shall be lifted to higher planes of thought, because you shall teach them, even as you have been taught. This message about how to practice and exercise your will seems extremely pertinent. To do this, hold your expectations with confidence. If you have expectations of health, it may manifest in our bodies and in our lives. The way to hold the constructive image is to hold the image. William James had considerable insight when he said that every day we ought to do something that we do not want to do. He suggests this is a regular practice so that your will is prepared and strong, ready for the time when you need it. There is apparently no state of being or becoming where we do not have to exert ourselves on behalf of our becoming our best selves. And the matter of achieving and maintaining health is no exception. The exercise of directing your actions through decisions that is through your will is not always difficult. The exercise of faith is not always an effort. The achievement of health does not need to be a struggle, and the demonstrating abundance does not require striving. There comes a time, I am sure, when your soul is so securely set in its path that all good things just start to happen. An individual who is filled to the brim with love will have no need to forcefully push his willpower. Acting always in love, there is no space for the destructive emotions, the defeating thoughts, the selfish actions. This forcing of will tends to call for aggression. Forcing your will through aggression or using your internal power are the root cause of all ill health and limitation. Love loses itself in another. And hence, it still remains loved even when you use it. Love gives joy to the heart and light to the countenance. Love reigns forever. Sorrows pass away. Ignorance with its train of misery shall be no more. But love endures and gives peace to the soul. And if anyone thinks these bright words have nothing to do with health, let them put them to work and prove them is the end of chapter seven.